Welcome to part one. I'm shooting the first roll of Foma Pond 400 film, black and white, through the Salyut medium format 6x6 camera, which I recently purchased. Now, before I start, I would like to say that it was some kind of a challenge to get a right balance between explaining, photographing, and filming uh, this part one. So, hopefully, in coming videos, you'll see that I'm progressing with regards to making better videos. To give you a little bit of an idea how my setup has been, I've actually used an old flash bracket to which I also connected my Fuji to make sure that I film the composition more or less because they are, these are different formats but at least you get an idea of my composition and also uh, I take you along simultaneously making a video while I'm photographing the subject. Now. The first roll of film was the Foma Pond 400 and for that roll I've only been using the 80mm standard lens that actually came with this camera. So that's now finished. I have a roll of 160 uh, Kodak Portra film loaded into the camera and for that film I'm going to be using primarily the 65mm lens. So that's for a part two. In this part one I'm going to show you four examples of photos that I've been taking and these have been scanned in at 300 dpi and after each photo I'll also show you a 100% crop to give you an impression of the sharpness uh, of the camera and also an impression of the quality of the Foma Pond 400. This is the first shot on the Foma Pond 400 and it's at 1 25th of a second at f16. Here we go. It's somewhat of an awkward shot hanging here above the water. So let me quickly focus. There we are. Again, 125th at F16. This shot was taken at 1 25th of a second at f16. f16, 2 seconds using a remote shutter release. One thing I would still like to mention is the fact that I'm already missing my wide-angle lens. This 80mm, which is equivalent to a 50mm for 35mm films, uh, isn't wide enough to really capture the scene of this old church. Uh, for that reason, I already purchased a 65mm wide-angle lens and uh, it's already landed in the Netherlands. It's from a seller in the Ukraine, so I hope to be able to receive that uh, this week. So I can also uh, present you with some results using a wide-angle lens. So that's something that's going to be coming up. Um, a 65 millimeter. Here we have it, a 65 millimeter. 3.5 lens with the original lens cap. So uh, let's put it on the camera and uh, see what kind of an image we can get with this new lens. Now that you've seen the first pictures that I've taken on this camera, um, I would like to give you my first impression and some hints and tips with regards to using this type of camera. First of all, I want to talk about the weight and especially uh, the setup that I'm using here. I'm actually using two cameras 
on an old flash bracket and this means that you really have to connect this uh, to a sturdy tripod. If you have a flimsy tripod it's not going to work and uh, this is almost at the limit of the tripod that I'm using so I'll also have to think about another tripod for the nearby future. Another thing that I bumped up against is the fact that the slowest shutter speed on this camera is actually half a second. So for longer shutter speeds uh, you either need a timer or you need to count the seconds which is not absolutely accurate. For the long exposure shots on this camera, I've been using of course my tripod and a remote cable release, putting it on the B for bulb mode and actually counting the seconds. So I guess that worked out okay. Another thing that's very important to take into account with this camera is the viewfinder. It has a waist level viewfinder with a small magnifying glass. And the magnifying glass is fine if you want to pinpoint your focus. But the magnifying glass only covers the exact center of your composition. So if you want off-center sharp focus, then you cannot use this magnifying glass. Please take that into account, don't forget, because otherwise you're always going to be exactly focusing on the center of your composition. Thanks for watching.